This is Manny, my cameraman, and I'm Nick, a chef who makes cooking videos. I do not film, and Manny does not cook. But today, we're switching jobs anyways. I'm nervous. Me too. In front of you is everything you need to make the perfect lasagna. I've made you fresh pasta dough, laid out all of your ingredients, and you have full access to anything in this state-of-the-art kitchen. If the subscribers vote that you've made a successful lasagna, I will give you $1,000. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. But there's one more detail. If the lasagna is not perfect, you're doing all my dishes for the next month. That's a lot of dishes. Oh, and last thing, I don't know why you're still standing there, because I'm giving you one hour, and I started your time about 10 minutes ago. What? I feel like making Manny sweat today, and I see him pulling in now, so his time is gonna start right now, and he has no idea. So I should start, okay. All right, let's get going. I've actually never made a lasagna before, but I have a general idea of how to do it. Concerning. Why do you think I picked lasagna? I'm gonna start with the base, the sauce. Time is ticking, Manny. In the past, with some of our challenges, we've given Manny a few extra minutes. Today, no extra minutes, especially when money's on the line, and especially when you're voting. All right, I'm gonna cut my onions. Oh boy. Wow, I have never seen you go this fast. <laughs> I've never seen Manny go this fast. So for me, there are four main components of lasagna. First, you have, of course, the fresh pasta, which luckily for Manny, he doesn't have to make himself today. Second, you have that classic bolognese sauce, which has to be meaty and delicious and flavorful. And that's gonna be really important to see if Manny can bring out that flavor. I'm gonna cry. I'm not good with onions. <laughs> oh my God. Why did you start with the onions? The third component is a bechamel sauce, which some say is optional in a lasagna, but for me, it's important. It gives that creamy deliciousness, brings the sauce all together, and last but not least, it works well with the fourth component, which is cheese. All right, I'm gonna put some olive oil in. Oh, might be a little bit too much, but I'm just gonna go with my gut. I should have taken a lesson from our 100 food hacks video and put a slice of bread in my mouth. Maybe I wouldn't be crying so much. Mm. I know. Hmm, told you. <laughs> Take all this with a grain of salt. I really don't know what I'm doing. It's a big guess. I think it's hot enough. I'm really not sure. I'm gonna put one onion. See. It's not hot enough. <laughs> All right, I think it's okay. Put my onions in. Oh, that sounds good. A good sizzle is always good. Not bad. Nick usually doesn't let me handle the equipment, but I get it today. It's a pretty good treat. Now I'll keep moving the onions around. I don't want them to burn. Garlic's going in. I think it's small enough, but I mean, what do I know? Don't do that with my knives. Whatever you just did, scraping it all over the pan, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep stirring this till the onions are kind of translucent, and then I'm gonna go in with some of the tomato stuff. They kind of look translucent. I'm not really an onion expert. What I will say is Manny has started off the bolognese in the proper order. You wanna have that really fresh chopped onion, the garlic, and you wanna heat it up until you're getting those nice aromatic smells across your kitchen, which actually Manny is achieving right now. So as far as I'm concerned, he's a little slow on time, but he's off to a good start. Now I'm gonna crank the heat a little bit, and I'm gonna get ready to add my meat in. I'm gonna go in with the beef, the ground beef first. I'm not really sure how much I should put in. I'm gonna kind of eye it. <laughs> put the whole thing in. Let's see what happens. Here you go. I'm gonna chop it up a little bit because it's really chunky. He's already making the mistake of the fact that he's putting in this ground beef now and he's not using his sausage, which is over off to the side, just sitting there all limp and sad and left alone over there. What will happen here is he's gonna overcook the beef and that sausage is gonna be lagging behind. All right, I wanna go with the sausage. I'm definitely not opening this, right? What are you doing <laughs> to the sausage? That's disgusting. <laughs> this is obviously my first time filming Manny. One of the things I will say, while Manny is struggling a little bit in certain aspects here, my arms are getting really tired, specifically right here. On the front of both of my shoulders, it's hard to hold this up to the point that I almost wanna pin my arms down on my stomach and just sit like this. I will often yell at Manny a little bit if he starts getting tired throughout the day, but I'm starting to understand. So for me, this is a good exercise. Now, no, now Nick, no, how's that? You know how I feel. That didn't, what, that, I don't know how you, what you just said, I don't, that didn't make any sense. Now you know how I feel. Never in all my years of cooking have I seen anybody do this. Ever. I've been in a lot of kitchens, I've seen a lot of different people cook, I've never seen anybody do what Manny's doing right now. I don't want the beef to be too chunky, so that's why I'm doing the dual spatula method. The what? The dual spatula method. It's working actually pretty well. For some reason, I think people watching the video are gonna love the dual spatula, and I think actually maybe a lot of people will do it after seeing you do it today, which <laughs> concerns me. I honestly don't know why Nick's never done this. It's, it works pretty well. I'm just realizing now that there's carrots over here, and these should have been in earlier, but um, I'm not a huge carrot fan, so I'm actually not gonna use these. I also wanna point out, Manny, that you have 38 minutes left, and you haven't really done all that much yet. Okay, I'm putting in tomato paste. Tomato paste, okay. Me, I would've added the tomato paste in earlier. I would get it caramelized a little bit. It's harder to get that caramelization when you have so much in the pot, especially with all that meat. The fat is dripping off of it. It's gonna coat the bottom of the pan with all that moisture and liquid, and it's harder to caramelize. At least he's adding it, I will say that. Yeah, I didn't forget it, I didn't forget it. I know that's a crucial part to the sauce. After this, I'm gonna go with all of my other tomato ingredients. I wanna just 
combine this well first before I do that. You so look like a... you're tossing a salad, is what you look like. <laughs> it kind of is a salad in a way, right? I want all the flavors to combine well. I'm also short on time, so this is speeding things up for me. Now, I'm gonna go in with some tomato sauce. I don't really wanna go in with the bigger tomatoes because I don't wanna have to chop them. Might be a mistake, but I'm just going with what I feel what I wanna do. So what's gonna happen now is Manny is gonna seriously lack texture inside the lasagna. And there's something about having those whole amazing San Marzano tomatoes that's fantastic. Now he's putting a couple in, <laughs> which is totally, totally the right call because you want that texture. You want to break those apart. He can use the dual spatula method if he wants to. I've worked in Italian restaurants and they'll just take a big giant bowl, the biggest bowl you've ever seen, throw a bunch of those tomatoes in there and everyone goes in with their hands and crushes them up and that's the way to do it. Your workstation, it is a horrendously bad mess. Manny has spilled things that he hasn't even used yet. So that is one of my biggest critiques so far with what Manny's doing. It doesn't matter if you make a mess though, as long as it tastes good. So the one thing Manny still needs is herbs, right? Yep, and I'm gonna put dried oregano. <laughs> I'm gonna put dried oregano <laughs> and some fresh basil and that will finish up the sauce. Still hasn't put salt. I've put salt on the meat, so Nick's not completely right, uh, but I'll add some more. Obviously Osmo, nothing but Osmo here. And then we're gonna grab some of our fresh basil. I'm just gonna rip it up and add it in. All right, now I'm gonna bring this over here and let this simmer and let all the flavors get to know each other. So confused. <laughs> this makes no sense. Why are they both lighting at the same time? Now before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna give it a little taste, see if it needs anything. Always taste as you go. Woo, it's hot. Needs a little bit of sugar, maybe a little bit more salt. I'm gonna use some brown sugar. Brown sugar? Yeah. Why are you using brown sugar? I always use brown sugar. <laughs> I'm really short on time. Um, we're moving on to the next sauce. There's some fancy name for it, but I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna call it the, the butter white sauce. Special put... melt. It's the best. Bechamel sauce. Butter's gonna go in. And just so you all know, I have measured out these ingredients for Manny. I felt it might be a little bit unfair to just leave <laughs> him with a full pantry and ask him to make a full lasagna. So we're at least giving him a little bit of a layup here, but we have to see if he can finish. I think I got it, but I'm a little worried about this part. Let me just tell you this right now. I may be having trouble holding this camera up, but just wait till we get to see Manny roll out fresh pot. Oh God, I can't get it out. It's stuck. All right, flour's going in. Combine this all together. I can already tell Manny has messed up his bechamel sauce. You don't want that mixture on the bottom to start getting golden brown like that. We're looking for a white sauce. Manny himself called it a white sauce. I'm gonna call it the butter white sauce. It should be white. Uh-oh. As Nick would call it, it looks like a broken sauce. So soft. It's not properly emulsified. It would be what we call a broken sauce. I guess it's broken. <laughs> so soft. Seems to be a little bit too thick. I'm gonna steal some flour. Too thin. Too thin, yeah, it's too thin. This for me is where things start going downhill. Manny is throwing raw flour into this really, really loose milky mixture. When you try to make a roux like that with flour, you have to mix it in a small portion off to the side so you get that nice paste, and then you mix it in with the rest. You don't just throw it in there, or that's how you get clumps. I don't know, it actually might work. I turn the heat off, because I, I don't know, I'm always worried if I overheat these kind of things. I'm gonna move this off to the side and let it sit, and I'm gonna come back to this when I start layering the lasagna. Manny, take the spatula, lift the bechamel sauce up in the air and see how thick that is. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay. You know what? I think I'm happy with it, but as it cools down, I think it's gonna get thicker. So maybe we'll add a little more milk. Manny, the time is starting to go pretty fast now. I know, I know. You have not even rolled out your pasta yet. You have a horribly messy workstation. Did you just throw it on the floor? Pick it up off the floor. Don't throw it all over the floor. I didn't. It's only on here. You picked it up. You just threw it on the floor. There's over nothing. The floor. It's just an onion. My favorite favorite part of the day, watching Manny try to roll out this box today. I'll be happy if he succeeds, and I don't like to root for anyone's failure, but there's a chance today's an exception. All right, now I'm gonna try to roll out my pasta. I've seen Nick do this a couple times, but I kind of forget. Wasn't really paying attention. I've given him so many good pasta lessons. It's sad to hear that he hasn't paid attention. It's really sticking to get some flour on this dust a little bit. I don't want to dry it out though too much. The camera's getting really hot. What is, is that normal? Yeah, this one gets a little bit hotter. I'm gonna take my knife, because this is way too big to toss through here, and I'm gonna split it in the three sections. Hold your fingers when you cut. You gotta use the claw method. Don't have your fingers out like that when you cut, and he's gonna chop his fingers off. All right, here we go. Don't blow on the pasta machine again. I don't know what that was when you just blew on it. Don't blow <laughs> on the pasta machine. There should be no scenario when you're making pasta when you blow on the machine. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh God, there's a, there's a hole in it. Got like one little piece here. Oh God, I can't get it out. I need to make sure I'm capturing all of this. Okay, that's why it was all messed up. It was way too thin. All right. <laughs> oh this may or may not work. Don't waste the sheets, because you might need all of it. I might need all of it, yeah. So. Look how big your lasagna tray is. Here we go. Oh, man. Oh, oh, this is better than last time. Manny's first mistake oh. is that he's not even pressing out those big hunks of pasta from the ball. He cut the ball as it was and tried to stick through these big pieces. There are so many pieces Ooh. of pasta hanging off the bottom of this. What are you doing? Take the dingleberries off the bottom of the thing, Manny. Oh. 
Yeah, I actually kind of like this one. I think I might keep this. I hope it's not too thick. Too thick. One of the best things I've seen Manny do today, and I'm hoping that he's seen me do this over time, he really flowered up that lasagna sheet and he made sure to roll it up and let it sit off to the side. But with that being said, something like this right here would make the thickest, gooeyest, gummiest lasagna you've ever had in your life. So I hope that Manny plans on rolling this out more. And between us, I know he wasn't planning on it. Pasta expands when it cooks. You can't just roll it out on the first setting and then cook it. My arms are getting so tired from this stuff. I'd rather be cooking right now. Once again, I gave Manny a full hour, or realistically 50 minutes, to get his lasagna in the oven. Once he gets the pan in the oven, we can hang out and let it bake. But 50 minutes to get a lasagna in the oven when the pasta is already made for you should be totally doable. Uh oh, oh God, oh God, oh God, uh oh. I'm gonna save what I have. No. I'm aborting the mission. You cut it off in the middle? What happened then? You, are you wetting the pasta dough? Yeah. What are you doing to it's the pasta dry. dough? It's too dry. And then I'm gonna it just ran it under the sink. Oh. No. Oh no. <laughs> no. No. Nick, is this like the game show? Can I, can I phone a friend? I need some help. How does it look even worse from this side? What did you do to the table? Do you cook like this at home? Sometimes. This is out of kitchen nightmares. First things first, when you flour, you want to be flouring from much higher up. You want to make sure that it really gets an even spread over everything. Why is there brown sugar? I, I like it. <laughs> I like the brown sugar. Second, you did a pretty good job with these lasagna sheets. But one, it has to be way thinner. And two, we don't want to be touching this side when we let it fall through. We're only touching oh. the side that we feed it in on. So as I go, I'm going to tighten it up. You can skip numbers. You don't have to go one to two, two to three. And it'll do all the work for you. My hand is just going to hang out behind the pasta and it's going to fold itself all neatly up. As long as you have enough flour and are being nice and gentle with the pasta sheets, you're totally good. This right here is a nice pasta sheet. It's nice and evenly floured. We know it's not going to stick to itself. It's a little bit thin, but I can layer this off to the side and we're done. You're back on your own. Okay, we're gonna flower up from up high like Nick told me to. And then we're gonna lower it in. Hope for the best. Ah. Not too bad. It's off to a good start. The same thickness that Nick did, so I think I'm gonna leave this off to the side. I don't think that's gonna be enough pasta for the entire lasagna. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more. I don't have a lot of time too, so I gotta hurry up. Can I see that sheet that you have? Can you hold it up? What? did you do to that? How did you even make it look like that? It's a dexter setting. It's looking to me at this point like I'm gonna need to give Manny a few extra minutes to get it in the oven. He's so, so close. And I wanna see how this lasagna turns out. So I'm not gonna let time ruin that. I'm gonna add back the 10 minutes that I took away from him earlier. Woo! How anybody can woo when a pasta sheet looks like this is beyond me. My arms are so uh -oh. How did you get it so skinny like that, Manny? I don't know. There's flour all over the fresh herb. Looks like there was a food fight with a bunch of kids from middle school. The oven is ready and begging for Manny to bring that lasagna. And actually, oh. I will say this sheet is finally somehow <laughs> turning out okay. This might be my best one. I wouldn't call it the best one. We're moving on to the pasta phase. I have this really cool, like, accordion like pasta tool. And I'm going to use this to kind of flare the edges and make them look like lasagna dough. If you're making lasagna at home, not an absolute must, but it will give that look to the sheets that you buy in the store. So if Manny wants to do this, I'm totally okay with it. There we go. We got one sheet right here. Now we got this one. I'm going to trim it because it's just way, way too long. And there are a bunch of holes in the side. And there's a bunch of holes in the side. Yep. So we're going to. Chop it right there. Mm. Do the edges again. Flour all over his body. I like the look of this, but I feel like I'm like, flour in here. I'm like wasting a uh, material here. Flour on his face. Flour is everywhere except for the cutting board. Not an even pasta sheet, right? You want it to be nice and even. Manny's coming in like a triangle on this pasta sheet. It looks okay, and I think it's gonna work. It looks like one of those college flags. You know the like college flag? Just keep cooking. Okay. It's not a college okay. fire. Okay. It's lasagna sheets. I'm gonna skip this moving forward. I just don't think I have the time to do it. So part of it's gonna be fluted on the edges, and the rest is just not gonna be. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> How much time do I have, Nick? Not a lot of it. Okay. This is gonna be part of the layering in the lasagna. We're gonna make a ricotta cheesy paste that's gonna go in between each layered pot. Spatula. This is all gonna go in here. You need an egg. Egg yolk only. So I'm gonna open this, grab it out. Pass that in there. I'm gonna put some oregano in there. Did you look this up on your I did, I promise. How do you know all this? I don't. What do you what is this? What are you doing then? I wanna make like a cheesy paste that's gonna go in between each layer. But how did you like did you think of this? Did you what what where is this coming from? Because there's cheese in there's cheese in lasagna. And this is, the, this is the cheese I was given. I got Parmesan. You don't want to mix. You don't want to do it separately. You're gonna mix it all. Yeah, it's okay. I have no say over this lasagna. Okay. This is your lasagna. Okay. So if you want to mix it, you do it. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I'm going with Parmesan. Never ever seen anybody do this either. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulders are burning. These little areas right up here, I didn't think it would hurt like this, but it is hard to hold the camera up like this. Whoa, what are you doing? That's our ricotta. Now we move on to making lasagna. 
It's pretty good. Yeah, see? It's pretty good. All right, I now, wouldn't have done it like that. Tastes great. Thanks, man. Good job. All right, we're gonna move back over here to our sauce. It's been simmering for a while, I think. I think it's been on. I only have a few minutes left. I really have to get this lasagna layered. I'm not giving you any extra time above the 10 minutes that you've already got. All right, so just to speed things up, I'm gonna use a spatula here. So he's going in sauce first. Yeah, I don't want my pasta to stick. And I've heard that if you put the sauce down, prevents that. There's a lot of arguments about what you're supposed to layer first. What I will say is that I have no problem with going in sauce first. I've actually heard a lot of people say sheet first. I've heard a lot of people say put a little layer of oil and then a pasta sheet first. It's almost like one of those chicken or the egg type scenarios. Not the tool I would have used to layer it out. I think it's working pretty well. Now I'm gonna use like the worst cuts of pasta um, on the bottom because you're not really gonna see them. And that's gonna be our first layer. There we go. The foundation of the lasagna. So as you can see, Manny is opting not to cook his lasagna sheets before he puts them in the pan. Manny, what's the thought behind that? I never really thought about it till then. Was I supposed to cook these? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for many, you can actually get away with not cooking your lasagna sheets first, and that is another thing a lot of people argue about, whether to cook it first or not. But we're doing it this way. Too late now. Next, we are gonna go with our bechamel sauce. That's gonna be our third layer. You know, I'm just gonna let it kind of pour. I don't have a ton of time. This is, this is pretty good, and the fact that it's a little bit more watery and milky actually may help when it comes to cooking the pasta. That's done. We're gonna go into the ricotta base. You know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, Osmo in here, too. I think that might amp it up. All right, here we go. With our ricotta. Gonna put a couple dollops in here and then spread it around. Manny, you have about a minute and a half to layer this, or you're done. Oh boy. I know it doesn't look that pretty, but I don't have a ton of time and I need to get these layers going. The great thing for many is a lasagna doesn't necessarily have to look pretty. It's rustic. It's gonna be served in a slightly sloppy way on the plate at the end of the day, and that is good. Whenever I get a piece of lasagna that is perfectly clean cut on the sides, I know it's not gonna be as good as a delicious rustic lasagna made from an Italian grandmother. It's just not the same. I'm gonna start making shapes just to fill it in. A couple of clumps in the bechamel I see, but again, okay, we're gonna let it fly. One of my biggest complaints about the day so far is just the general cleanliness of Manny's workstation. It is some of the messiest cooking that I have ever seen, but he's done this every single time we've had any sort of competition and somehow at the end of the day, he often ends up with a dish that's pretty solid. The last layer of sauce. It's all right. Thank God Nick has a big spatula like this. It's really saving me right now. I don't think I could spread this fast enough with my mini spatula. The little spatula method wouldn't even save me now. This is our last layer of pasta. Didn't you say that you were saving the pretty ones for the top? Yeah, I got a pretty one right here. Pretty to me at least. Bechamel sauce, gonna use the rest of it. I like the idea of coating the top with a little bit of bechamel there, but let's see what he does next. Last layer of ricotta. It's getting a little messier now because I'm in a rush, but I'm just working with what I got here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna top it with some <laughs> oregano. Time's up, but I'm gonna help him. And we're gonna put cheese on top. Good. I was waiting, waiting, waiting for the cheese on top. And last but least, I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of Parmesan on top. Last but not least. Last but not least. <laughs> So the topping of the lasagna here is exactly what I would have done. Making a huge mess though. Keep it in the lasagna pan, Manny. Yeah, sorry. Then we got a little more oregano on top. Get a little texture on the top. Too that's much it. oregano. And it's ready to get put in the oven. Before I put this in the oven, I'm just gonna clean it up just a little bit so it's not so messy. Mm -hmm. And we're right off to the oven. Here we go. Wow, this is like really heavy. I preheated the oven to 375 and she goes. If I can figure out how to open it. Aha, help me out here. Better turn out, okay. To be honest, I don't know how long to cook this, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it until I think it's good. I've helped Manny too much today. One thing I will say is that it worries me a little bit not to have it covered, at least at a certain point, to make sure that those pasta sheets can actually cook and sort of steam with all that liquid inside there. I'm gonna let it fly. I think it's good. I have these nice golden brown bubbles on the top. I really don't wanna burn it, so I'm gonna just take a wild guess here and say that it's probably done. It smells freaking amazing. I really don't wanna burn myself. Careful here. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You okay? What I happened? Touched, I touched the side, because it's close. Mini, question. Yeah? Have you ever made like cookies or anything <laughs> like that? I have, I have. Should have pulled the rack out. I don't know what I was thinking there. It's a battle scar, Mini. It's good, I have a couple. There we go. Woo, that looks good. Oh my gosh. It smells amazing, too. We got a really beautiful brown crust on the top. Smell the cheese, you can smell the thyme. You can see the Parmesan flakes on the top. Time? Time? Time. <laughs> did you put time in there? Yeah, I did. On the top. Oregano? Oh, 
Oregano, oregano, that's what I meant. One thing I will say right away with this lasagna, you notice that Manny left it in the oven, didn't rotate it the whole time, and you got a perfect line right through the middle where half of it is nice and golden brown and bubbly. The other half is still white. It's the color of the bechamel sauce with a few golden brown spots here and there. If I were Manny, I would have rotated that halfway through to get even cooking across the whole lasagna, and that would have made it evenly colored as well. You know where the spatulas are? Now let's plate it and give it a taste. I'm gonna go for the centerpiece. I think that's gonna look really pretty. Hope it doesn't fall apart when I take it out. So, go in here with the spatula. This might be the most concerning thing of all the day. I got a couple of tries to do this, so. Just need something sharper. There we go. Should've given him a time limit for getting a slice out. <laughs> Manny, come on. There we go. I'm gonna carefully take the lasagna out of the baking dish. I'm gonna carefully put it on the plate without trying to make too much of a mess. Now I'm gonna garnish it with one piece of basil, and that's it, mini lasagna. While it may have been painful to watch a couple of the things that just went down, I'm excited to try this lasagna. One, I like the basil on the top. It gives it a nice pop of color. Two, one of my favorite things in lasagna is that crispy lasagna sheet that you get on the edge, and if you listen carefully, you can hear that Manny actually got it crispy, whether he meant to or not. I meant to. Three, he does have that mix of French and Italian with the bechamel sauce and the bolognese and the rest of those classic ingredients. With all that being said, it all comes down to taste. I'm also curious whether or not the pasta is gonna be properly cooked. It's good lasagna. It's always a good sign when you wanna dive in for another bite. I might owe Manny a thousand dollars. Thanks to Dropbox for sponsoring this video. It's seasoned really well. There's a really nice balance of cheese in it. I don't know how he pulled it off, but he did it. As promised, Manny had a chance here to win $1,000 if he made the perfect lasagna, according to you. Right as he finished, I put up a picture of his lasagna on YouTube community and you all voted. And after scrolling through, I don't think I found a single no. Looks like Manny's going home with some money. Woo!